everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark. As always, I am Excalibur, joined by the human suplex machine, Taz. And Taz, a lot of Team Taz influence here on the show tonight. Taz, wouldn't you say so, Taz? Yes, sir, I would, Excalibur. Uh, you're not Taz, I am. Ricky Starks will join us later for a couple of matches here at the commentary desk. And Powerhouse Hobbs in action. He's not in a good mood, my friend. In action in this episode. Well, let's not delay any further and throw it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. This body set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Cleveland, Ohio, weighing to 167 pounds. Ooh, low. Mr. Mayhem himself, the big man from the pinnacle, Wardlow, making his return to action here tonight on AEW Dark. Wardlow is the man that I like the most that's not in Team Taz. Like, I'm a big fan of Wardlow with friends. His opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 210 pounds, Baron Black. So if you're saying if Wardlow wasn't already in the pinnacle, mm. you'd be recruiting him for Team Taz. Well, as you know, Excalib, I'm always recruiting. Uh, one of my key men in uh, Team Taz, Sergeant Arms, is Ricky Starks to your right. AEW Starks, hey. That's right, bro. And we do we converse a lot, and we have uh, recruiting meetings and stuff like that, so we, we discuss this. You know, it's funny. I was actually going to say that I'm a big fan of Warlow as well. Yes, I know. I know you are, because I've read the text message you sent me <laughs> saying that he's awesome. He is. He's great. Look at that. Ah. <laughs> big Warlow. Warlow trying to intimidate Baron Black, but Baron Black, he's seen in the past, very level-headed, very crafty inside the ring. Oh no, Baron Black definitely is, and I think Wardlow's aware of that. Ah, so nice. Good sportsmanship right there, I like that. And it's also a nice little tad of sarcasm, which I like too, getting the guy's head. Really trying to undermine the confidence of his opponent. We saw him do something similar to Jake Hager during the cage fight on Dynamite. Just a, a <laughs> week ago. A little, little Matt return. Look at block that. the outside leg. The key is when you block that outside leg. Oh, that's a little uppercut to the arm. Nice. Maybe going for maybe for a full draw arm bar. Got oh. gut wrenched. Uh oh. Oh. Nice. Landed right on his ass. Right on the coccyx. Yeah, the coccyx tailbone. Yeah. We used to have that. Not anymore. No. We had all the guys in Team Taz. All their coccyx have been removed. Well, sure. It's a hook. It's a hook. You see, because yeah. no, he's not 25 yet. Yeah, he's a different breed. <laughs> different breed. <laughs> different pedigree. <laughs> Big Wardlow not playing games, baby. Big war dog, look at him. The hammer throw across the ring. Here he comes. Baron Black gets the boot up. Wardlow intercepts, but dumb idea. Baron with a chop. Wardlow swinging a miss. Uppercut. A chop and a rolling chop there. It's Baron Black Ooh. once again concentrating on that left arm of Wardlow. Oh, you're right, Excalibur. Oh, easy there. That's gimmick and friend. Whoa, what is that? Um, That's the Karahara Marajara uh, Almost, but no. Um, that would have been bad. It would have been a run-in. He's looking for the Cobra Clutch, but instead, Wardlow lands a massive, oof, massive lariat. That's what happens. So you play around with someone like the big Wardlow. Big Wardog. Big Wardog. Hey, Excalibur, would you ever wrestle this type of beast and Wardog ever in your career? Not if, if I could help it. Well, I've seen you Excalibur drop people on their uh -oh. heads, and I get it. Here we go. Watch uh, out. I love this. Looks like this is the name. Baron the name. Black oh! maybe the casualty <laughs> of war. Count it, baby. He's out. He's out. And that is it. The referee, referee has stopped this match. Your winner, Wardlow. Baron Black put up a fight, but not enough. Once that knee connects, it's over. Guess you got to call the mortician now, huh? Because there's a <laughs> morgue body on the loose. <laughs> That right. Watch the impact here. Oh, oh, that's that big clothesline right there. But watch the knee. Bam! Right across the jaw. Knocks his opponent right out. And great officiating there. Bryce Remsburg identified the danger that Baron Black was in. Stopped the match immediately. Wardlow victorious here tonight for himself and the pinnacle here on AEW Dark. Up next here on AEW Dark, Big Shotty Lee Johnson goes one on one with Vari Morales.
This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 180 pounds, Big Shotty Lee Johnson. It's really great to see how Lee Johnson has thrived here in AEW despite the infighting between the factory and the Nightmare family. Well, I disagree. Okay. Uh, because yes. uh, the whole thing, the drama between the factory and the Nightmare family, and then Lee Johnson's in the middle of it, it's kind of annoying for us team Taz members. From Juarez, Mexico, weighing 165 pounds, Vare Morales. Because Ricky, Team Taz, doesn't know anything about infighting, right? No, not at all. What we know is teamwork. Yes. And that's what we're about. Ricky Starks is all about teamwork. Ain't that right, Taz? You are, Ricky. You're, you're a team player. You're a, a blue chipper, as we call it in the sporting world. Yeah. Blue chipper. Blue chips. That's what I'm no, about. Just leave it at that. Blue chipper. Bro. <laughs> you're not playing poker. Stocks and bonds. Yeah. Blue corn chips is healthy. Yeah, just, just blue chip. Big shot, Lee Johnson, Vary Morales. Wow. Going one-on-one -on -one here on AEW Dark. That's what's up. All right, good lockup right here by both young athletes. Nice go behind there by Big Lee Johnson. Who's, oh, he went for that arm drag. Oh, he got it. I thought he slipped off that arm drag. But Lee Johnson maintaining control of the upper body of Vary Morales. I had a friend I went to high school with, guys, Vary. His name was Vary. Vary Van Vincent. Triple V. He had heat with everybody. Lee Johnson had the hammerlock in, but Morales rolls through. Lee Johnson transitions front chancery. Barry Morales into the head scissors. A good tightness right there across the foot on that head scissors. Quick to get to a four-point stance. Look at that flip through. Whoa. Great bridge up there by Lee Johnson. Transitions in, looking for oh. the backslide. Got him hooked deep. Just a two count. Watch out. Oh, just, just picked that ankle there. And Morales goes for the pin as well as the puck crosses the center line. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was watching the fourth monitor on the desk, Taz. That's it, man. <laughs> oh, you guys. Nice headlock right here. Look at this. Good job by Vary to slow down Lee Johnson. Oh. Both men collide center of the ring. Lee Johnson showing off that newfound confidence. I would never let a man flex on me like that. Word. Ever. Morales oh, off whoa. middle rope. Lee Johnson flips through, lands on his feet. I don't like Lee see, That's the stuff that, but see, Ricky, that's what he's getting from Cody. He's getting that, that arrogance. And the you know ego. Cody very well. You've been in the ring, the ego, yeah, you've been in the ring with Cody. Yeah. You pushed him, almost beat him for the TNT title when he had it. Yeah, I beat his ass. You did. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Damn. Lee Johnson let his guard down, and Vary Morales Made Johnson pay. See Dustin Rhodes coaching him up there on the outside. For some reason, wearing crazy blue surgical gloves. But that's Dustin. He's a strange person. Yeah, I agree. And not a good coach, because Lee just got kicked in the mouth. Because he went for the old handshake. And Rowry got him with the uh, oldest trick in the book. Watch out. Whoa. Goes oh. up. Wow, deep stack. Morales escapes. Oh. Out oh. drop kick. Powerful drop kick. It's tough when you get kicked in the mush by a dude wearing hot pink tights. That's a rough. <laughs> That's a rough night on YouTube, bro. Look at the far <laughs> leg. You get kicked in the mush by homie wearing just magic glow green and hot pink. <laughs> streaming on the YouTubes. You Rex Calba, Taz, and Ricky Starks watch. You'd rather have him wear orange? No. Okay. Just, just straight gray or black or navy. Reminds me of that high seat drink from back in the 90s. You know what I'm talking the, about? The Ecto Cooler? Yeah. But just inverted. Different colors, obviously. Don't don't at me on Twitter about it, folks. Morales looking for oh. the three amigos. Sits down in the Falcon Arrow. He's done the deal. Nobody kicks out of the Falcon Arrow. Oh, Lee Johnson kicked out of the Falcon Arrow. Kicked out on half a one. Wow. Fari told me that move is called the Chiles Quiles. So oh really? I just want to let you know that. Appreciate that insight, my friend. Oh, Fari just there's no back down him. He keeps bringing the fight. Tried to block, uh, Lee tried to stop that snap man, but it wasn't gonna happen. And now slowing the momentum down, trying to got a little blood, a little blood flow. I think I think Lee maybe bit his own tongue off. It's the kicks. You're right. Those kicks stick in the, the face. Yeah. Stick in the face. I think he bit his tongue off, Excalibur, like I, completely off. Probably not. They'd, I bet they'd stop the match. There'd be a lot more blood. <laughs> Unless he swallowed it. Yeah, Unless he swallowed is, the blood. Which is really disgusting. <laughs> Then he yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah, let's let's go down this line of thought. Yeah, maybe he, he bit his own tongue. <laughs> oh, Inside cradle here. 
Just a two count. Well, he wouldn't be able to do that beautiful inside cradle if he had his tongue bitten off. We went to medical school, Excalibur, so don't try to test us. Yeah, exactly. We as in you and I, or? Well, knife club, no. We as a community. Look yeah. at these clotheslines. Taz, yes. Oh. So we're gonna miss Ooh. back elbow. And the hanging neck breaker oh. by Johnson. Everybody got a tooth knocked out or got his lip busted open there, but good uh, intensity by Lee Johnson. Blood is always one. Oh, oh. ooh, face first on the apron there. Look at that. The Bandera sent Lee oh, Johnson no. over the top. Vary Morales. Oh, Vary. Ooh. Diving and driving Lee Johnson down to the outside. Yeah, that was some impact right there by Vary for sure. Dropped, just took Look at Lee this. Johnson right out. Oh. And usually on a, a cross body like that coming off the top rope, it's more of a rolling motion. Sure. But Vary Morales came in at such a Flat, steep angle. Straight down, yeah. yeah. That's how I used to do it. <laughs> Morales coming over the top. Lee Johnson. Whoa. It's taken down by the Tijeras. Swing and a miss by Johnson. Morales comes. Throw gets pancaked. Going in for the kill right here. Johnson. Oh, the oh. hook and the Ushi Garoshi. Lee Johnson covers and gets the win. The winner of this match, Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Well, it's good recovery right there from Lee Johnson. I got to give the devil his due. Good job right there for him to come out of that and get that win because Barry had no back down on him, man. He didn't really put up a good fight. Boom, oh. right on the back of your head. You're done. Absolutely not. This is one of the best performances we've seen out of Barry Morales and Lee Johnson. Taz, I think, lucky to walk out of here with the W tonight. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that because he got pushed a little bit a little bit. Maybe he looked past Barry, but no matter. He got the win here, Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson victorious here tonight on AEW Dark. Well, if you're new to AEW and you're new to AEW Dog and you've never seen Abaddon compete, well, buckle up. You ain't never seen nothing like this. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Crawling to the ring from the Black Hills, Abaddon! Abaddon returning to action here on AEW Dark. She has been on an incredible roll as of late. She's been on a great crawl, too. Oh, I see what you did, ah! <laughs> No, listen, she, uh, Abaddon is uh, highly dangerous for sure. Ricky Starks, I know you frequent a lot of different clubs. Kind of some you know, wild stuff at times. I don't think we've seen some folks like this at the clubs you frequent there in New Orleans. Hell no. <laughs> Maybe Baton Rouge. Ooh, from Houston, Texas. Hyon. Baton Rouge. Hyon making her AEW debut here on Dark Tonight. Hyon is concerned for sure. And, I don't blame him. And I know for a fact they have a lot of Abaddon type clubs in, uh, New Orleans. in New Orleans. How do you know that? I've read an interview with the Vampire. Oh, oh my God. Freak! Maybe. <laughs> What do you got against Dan Rice, guys? Nothing. We don't kink shame here. Yeah. Not here on AEW Starks, the internet's favorite show within a show. Within yeah, a right. show, because we're nightclub. That's right. So in the show from a different show, inside the show. But Abaddon not able to get her hands on high end, so now we'll see what happens. High on's in for a fight high here. Not high end. I'm, I say it how I want. Hey, bro, won't get hot at me. I was saying it one way, too. I'm don't get all hot. Getting hot. Hey, hey, I'm getting hot at you, brother. I'm just saying. I'm all just right. telling how I see it. Look at Abaddon. this. Abaddon. <laughs> Laying in some Whoa. strikes. Frank Gaston just got screamed at by Abaddon. That's the ref. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, yes. this, this woman, Abaddon, She's freaks freaking me out. out. I know. I know. I've She's never had a woman make me feel like that before. Freaking out Hyan as well. Hyan seizing on the opportunity. A shot to the back. But Abaddon seems oh, unfair. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. Well done right there by Abaddon. That backhand was nice. We have to call the cops. Hyan. His forearms. Enduring some serious punishment here at the hands of the living dead girl, Abaddon. Abaddon charging in. One step ahead. And Watch out. Oh! oh! Backbreaker by Abaddon. Hyon in serious trouble. Abaddon 
making the crawl towards her opponent. Just imagine you're down there, your back almost got broken. Now your opponent looks like Abaddon crawling at you. Really freaks out your brain, man. Ion, though, keeping her composure. Ion on a hop. Lays. Oh! <laughs> oh God. Look for that cross body and met a <laughs> boot knee right to the gut. I don't think I've ever seen a counter like that for a cross body. I have to call the practitioner this time. I have to. This is it. Abaddon, the leg hooked around the head and driving. High on into the canvas. Abaddon covers and picks up the win. The winner of this match, Abaddon. Well, if you uh, call the practitioner, I can tell them exactly where to find the morgue body, center of the ring. Hey, listen, like, you know, we've talked about it. Excalibur, you and I have talked about it a lot. Uh, and uh, it's so hard to prepare. Ricky, you get this. It's so hard to prepare for someone like Abaddon. Oh. Right, I mean, Ricky Starks is one of the most successful wrestlers in the world. Yeah, He's prepared see. for his opponents. How do you prepare for Abaddon? It's so difficult, you know? I, 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 I don't know. This is this is taking a lot of toll on me mentally. Stressful. My neck, it's it's cracking up. I have to go. I okay, have brother. to go. I'm sorry, guys. All right, well, I tell love you. I love you, bro. Night club, Taz club. Taz club, bro. I will see that. Taz Club is actually called Team Taz. <laughs>20-minute-time-limit-making his way to the ring from East Palo Alto, California, weighing 270 pounds, Powerhouse Hobbs. Powerhouse Hobbs flying solo here tonight. No Ricky Starks, no hook with them. Well, there's a reason. I'll tell you that in a second. Actually, I'll tell you now. I'll tell you that in about four seconds. And his opponent, from Olive Branch, Mississippi, weighing 120 pounds, Marco Stunt. Tez, if I'm Powerhouse Hobbs, and you're facing the heavy from Jurassic Express, you know, the, the enforcer, so to speak, the, the man with all the brute force of Jurassic Express, I would want all of my teammates at my side. Well, the thing is, that's funny. That's very funny, Excalibur, if that is your real name. The thing is, uh, Hobbs is in a very bad mood after some recent activities, and we discussed that he wanted to go solo here on this episode of Dark. As you said, no stalks, no hook, no, 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 nothing, no, 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 the other guy, nothing. He just wants to beat someone's ass, and unfortunately, it's a guy uh, half his size in Marco's stun. Unfortunate for who? Unfortunate for Marco. I mean, Who's gonna win this match? Let's be honest. In your opinion, I know you're an on the fence guy, but like, who's gonna win this match? Well, if I had a nine-year-old to gamble with, I would put, <laughs> I would put my, my 401k on, on okay. Will Hobbs. And, and Hobbs is, and, and, and no, and, and all can decide like he's not in a good mood. He's just not. He's pissed off. And Marco, you know, Marco is, is athletic, oh, he's talented. Trying to use his quickness, but so Hobbs. This is, this is the problem here. Now. Once Hobbs gets his hands on Marco Stunt. Yeah, Marco, oh. that's the best thing for him to do is just run. No, no. Oh, man, look at, look at the speed, by the way. The giddy-up right there of Hobbs. Oh. Marco with a drop kick to the rib cage, turned his back on Hobbs. Ooh, shot to the midsection. Oh, well, he's crafty for sure. Might be going for a sliced bread. Oh, boy. Damn. Hobbs well, with the power, though, caught him in midair. Well, the sliced bread is green mold. And town business, baby. Done. Wow. That's it. The winner of this match, Power House Hobbs. I think Marco Stunt's spleen just came shooting out of, well, his earlobe. And that's that's a smile on the face of Powerhouse Hobbs. A smile of anger. And here, a nice counter right there. 
And here she stumped, gets caught. Town business right there. I think powerhouse. It might have been the smile of knowing that you just shortened a man's career, maybe even a man's life, by 10, 15 years. Well, that's what, hey, that's what we're about in Team Taz, beating the living hell out of people. See? Let's have a little fun with him. See, Hobbs is a fun-loving guy, you know, like all the members of Team Taz. Sure, just ask Marco Stunt. <laughs> Well, for this next match, we will be joined here at the commentary desk by the legendary Jake the Snake Roberts as the murder hawk monster destroys somebody. This body set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way into the ring from Hearn, Texas, weighing 273 pounds, the murder hawk monster, Lance Archer. His opponent from Patterson, New Jersey, weighing 195 pounds, Kenny Bengal. We are joined here at the desk by none other than Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake, I have to ask you, Lance Archer seems even more focused, even more angry than usual, which is, that's saying something. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll tell you something, but the whole locker room has noticed it. It's almost like somebody may have urinated in a soda pop. <laughs> so it wasn't me, by the way. I just want to get that clear. Okay. No, he is fired up, man. He, he's angry. He's fighting angry now. And, uh, and you can I'm see Ken, Kenny Bangles, there's a phone right here, Jake. What is he doing? He's like, I'm done. Well, he's smart. Kenny Bangles, like, the hell with this. I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> But, well, uh oh, uh oh, Archer, uh -oh. Kenny, no, Chase, no, hey, no, Kenny, no, no, chasing him up the ramp. Is he gonna? Oh God! And Kenny Bengal getting brought out to the ring the hard way by the Murder Hawk monster Lance Archer. Should have never turned his back. He should have never turned oh, his back. Oh my God! God. Did you see that? And the power. Archer threw him three quarters of the way across the ring from the ramp. Oh my Watch God! Watch out! Oh. Archer, the clothesline, Bengal, drop kick, right and Archer, it. Archer just walked through it. He literally through. did walk through the drop kick. Unbelievable. Oh! It's oh, a good looking move. I want to try yeah. that. Yeah! Oh, Jake the Snake style right there, buddy. That was nice. I think Lance Archer put a little extra on that one. Yeah, he put some snuff on that one. Yeah, yeah that thing belonged in Idaho right there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? A whole bag of potatoes yeah. there. Oh, French fries, too. Everything, man. <sighs> oh, geez. Suplex sending Bengal across the ring. Lance Archer just imposing his will on Kenny Bengal. Oh! It's a great way to lose an areola. <laughs> And that's, oh, the, that's oh. the best case scenario. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh I might cut mine off just thinking about it. <laughs> oh my God, God. man. Oh, Things like that causes bedwetting. You know what I mean? <laughs> knock, yeah, the, no knock the wee out of you. At any point in the match, Lance could just finish this young man off. I think he just is. That might be what he has in mind as he brings Kenny Bengal out to the center. Bengal kicks his legs oh, out. Why would you do that, son? Step up, Enzi Gary. Kenny Bengal trying to make a name for himself here tonight on AEW Dark. Uh, Might have just pissed uh, the Murder Hawk monster off. Uh, making a name is not good if it's in the obituaries. That's true. <laughs> Bengal. Fair point. Oh, Lord. It was, oh, no. Oh, no. God. Archer bringing Bengal up to his feet by the throat. Whoa! <laughs> massive, massive choke slam there by the Murder Hawk monster, Lance Archer. <laughs> Kenny Bengal going for a ride on the helicoaster, the cover, and a victory for Archer. Here is your winner, the Murder Hawk monster, Lance Archer. I love the intensity. Love it. He's going to hurt somebody bad. Well, he just hurt Kenny Bengal bad, and he picked up the win. Wow. The number two ranked Ty Conti in action next here on AEW Dark. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Ty Conti. Ty Conti, one of the most popular 
wrestlers here in all elite wrestling. But she is somebody that, you know, Taz, I think if you were to say Ty Conti could be an AEW Women's World Champion by the end of the year, nobody would disagree with you. I agree. Her opponent from Dayton, Ohio, Charlotte Renegade. Charlotte Renegade returning to action. Tough girl. Tonight on Dark. Charlotte's a tough girl for sure. She's got, got a tough straw here to draw, though, against Ty Conti, though, so we'll see what happens. Charlotte came in. Oh, she was going for a oh, nice oh, wow. long spin. It's like an long spin arm drag. She was going for something earlier called the Uchimata. That's what it looked like she was going for. But I think Renegade had a weight back a little bit. Well, I, I, it was a nice technique by Ty Conti, keeping her opponent's right foot off the mat, keeping her off balance. And as soon as both feet were off the canvas, took her down in that arm drag. And Conti now showing off her speed. Just a front sweep. Well, she did that little shimmy first. I mean, when she was playing judo, I don't think she was doing that in her gear. So right. Absolutely not. <laughs> Maybe after a victory, but. <laughs> now a version of a side headlock. You can see Charlotte has like, her. Almost like a bulldog choke. It's got the arms. Yeah. The arm right there. The arm yeah. lays through. Sometimes it can be a, sometimes it can be a problem because you, it can prevent a choke out. But she might have just trapped that arm to get some pressure on the shoulder. Ty Conte to do that to Renegade. Hammer throw into the corner. Charlotte Ooh. follows up. Clothesline. That was a big clothesline. Look at those forearm shots. Bringing it. Yes. Massive elbow strikes there by Charlotte Renegade, younger sister of Robin Renegade, who we've seen in action here on Dark as well. Nobody home there as Conti rolls out. Ooh, what a shot. And it's not, not many strikers can stop somebody in their tracks quite like that, but Ty Conti. Oh, went for that front kick. Oh, Conti's speed being put to good use here. Goes behind the waist lock, ripcord out. Nice. Showing for these uh, these three drop Sayanagis that she's known for. And maintains the wrist control. Charlotte tried to break free, but Conti grabs the other arm, the hammer throw into the corner. Oh! Massive pump kick by Ty Conti. And she's not done. Here she comes, Excalibur. And the face wash for good measure. I mean, Ty Conte is so talented. Beautiful young lady, but she's mean, man. Don't let that smile fool you. She's got a mean streak. Uh-oh. Hammer lock the DD tie. And the end of the night for Charlotte Renegade. No winner of this match. Ty Conte. Well, Renegade put up a fight for sure, but Ty Conte was just one step ahead throughout the match. He was able to capture a victory right there. As it seems like we are barreling toward Dr. Britt Baker defending the title the AEW Women's World Championship against Nyla Rose. I think Ty Conti could be the next challenger for whoever walks out of that matchup. I think you might be right. I I'd actually like to see that if, if Britt Baker can get done and get by Nyla Rose, which is tough. Hold on a second. Everybody dances Everybody's with trying to dance with Britt. Interesting tag team match coming up. The factory of QT Marshall and Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado in that corner collides with Dustin Rhodes' students from his wrestling academy. This is going to be interesting. This is a tag team contest set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Soon to be making their way to the ring with the natural Dustin Rhodes. The team of Zachariah and Chad Lennox. Two students of Dustin Rhodes at the Rhodes Wrestling Academy making their AEW Dark debuts here tonight. There's Chad Lennox in the black and turquoise. Zachariah in the short trunks. Well, good luck to these two young men. Let's see how it goes. Might be rough. And their opponents to be accompanied by Nick Camarado. At a combined weight of 420 pounds, the team of Aaron Solo and Q.T. Marshall. 
You're absolutely right, Taz. This could be a tough day at the office for the Road Wrestling Academy representatives going up against the factories, QT Marshall and Aaron Solo. Well, because as you know, QT Marshall, I mean, he's got a lot of issues with his former tag team partner, Dustin Rhodes. But that's a big problem right there. That's problem number one. QT also, in my opinion, one of the better wrestling trainers in the country, nevertheless world. So the way he runs his dojo, and then you have Dustin, who's also a great, great wrestling trainer. So there's a lot of that tension. Now, if you're QT and Solo, you got a chance to beat up on a couple of young guys that are students from Dustin's Academy. Collar There's the story for you, brother. Thank you. Collar number tie up. Aaron Solo takes the left wrist of Zachariah. Zachariah, though, rolling through. A good wrist control by Zachariah. <clears throat> but Solo's a veteran, so he's trying to feel out the young man and see what he's got going on. And pulls into a nice side headlock. And Zachariah went for the, the head scissors, but Solo scooted his body around, came around the corner to, to prevent that head scissors. Yeah, good, you know, good heads up move there. Correct. Right yeah, good observation. You keep your hips close and scoot them back. You, know, you can't get counted then in a head scissor type motion. How about those new white boots the QT? Moves? I like it. Oh, oh, I like that drop kick by I Zachariah. Do, that was a hell of a drop kick by this young man. Excellent. Makes his way over the corner, tags in Chad Lennox, seeing his first action of the evening. Chad got that two on one, but Aaron Solo able to get out with that well placed knee to the gut. And there's those fancy damn white boots by QT coming into play. Yeah, Lennox got a close up view of those boots and QT Marshall, massive right hand. And you mentioned that QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes were former tag team partners. The Natural Nightmares, they're extremely successful tag team. They even challenged for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. No doubt, no doubt. But, you know, things happen, issues come into play, and that's over with. Swing and a miss by Solo Lennox. It's a jumping kick, wasn't quite a drop kick, but QT backbreaker flatliner combo. Yeah, Lennox didn't know what hit him. That came out of nowhere, and then QT alleviating the young man off the apron. Zachariah goes flying. QT Marshall bringing Chad Lennox back over the corner. Another massive right hand pinpoint accuracy as he holds open the midsection of Lennox for Aaron Solo. Solo snaps in with the suplex. Brings Chad Lennox over the top. Yeah, Solo doing a lot of chirping, a lot of talking. Lennox needs to try to get to his partner, but Solo knows that the young man is in bad shape, and there ain't no way he's getting over there right now. Zachariah doing what he can to motivate his partner to get him over to the corner to make the tag. Comes to the midsection there by Solo. Uh-oh. That's the corner you don't want to be in. This is a very high-level tag team wrestling by Solo and QT Marshall. Absolutely. As you know, both veterans, both, you know, paid a lot of dues in this business. Uh, most folks oh. most folks know that about uh, about QT Marshall, but Aaron Solo also, he's been in the game a long time. He certainly you know? has, and they've kept Chad Lennox isolated in their half of the ring. Here oh. comes Solo. He's not done, dude. Solo leaping knee drop. And you notice Chad Lennox's body position. He is on the factory side of the ring. If you imagine that, that imaginary hypotenuse. That's a line for those that don't know what hypotenuse is. <laughs> it's a line that goes across the middle of a square. You can just say line, corner. fancy ass. <laughs> Big shot. It's a line, bro. I'm sure that's exactly what I sounded like. <laughs> yeah. And then they yeah, shut off, up, Pythagoras. He flipped off the Dynaflow. <laughs> oh, watch out. Zachariah, though, coming in, clothesline. Damn. Backbreaker. QT Marshall in a spot of trouble here. Swing and a miss by Aaron Solo. Zachariah. Work on Rana, takes Solo out of the ring. And one. Oh, no. QT, no, QT. No, no, no. Strength. Wow. Massive Liger bomb by QT Marshall. Great power. Great job by QT Marshall. Uh oh. Neck breaker backdrop combo by the factory. Aaron Solo got in mind here. Solo tagging in, QT. Diamond cutter on Zachariah Aaron Solo. Diamond foot oh. stomps almost into a senton. A two one. for one there, and the factory get the win. Here are your winners, the team of QT Marshall and Aaron 
Solo. Very impressive. I'll tell you, those two young men out of Dustin's Academy, Dustin Rhodes' Academy, did a, did a hell of a, had a hell of an outing. Gave up a lot of experience here. And put up a damn good battle, but not enough against Solo and QT. Yeah, QT Marshall, Aaron Solo had an advantage, and they exploited it here tonight at the expense of the Rhodes Wrestling Academy. The factory victorious in action on Dark. J.D. Drake with the wingman in his corner takes on Frankie Kazarian, the elite hunter, next here on AEW Dark. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Being accompanied by the wingman from Shelby, North Carolina, weighing 301 pounds, J.D. Drake. Taz, when I saw the lineup for AEW Dark tonight, this was a match that kind of jumped off the page at me. JD Drake, Frank Kazarian, two very ill-tempered competitors. Yeah, good point, good point. And Frankie's gonna give up a lot of size to JD, but yeah, both guys, definitely nasty attitudes. JD Drake with the wingman at his back, Cesar Bononi, Peter Avalon wearing matching shirts, and the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. And his opponent from Yucca Valley, California, weighing 210 pounds, Frankie Kazarian. We've seen a, a new attitude out of Frank Kazarian as of late, and it all can be traced back to the night that the Young Bucks cheated. They flat out cheated to end the run of SCU as a tag team, Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels. Yeah, and he's definitely the elite hunter for sure, Kaz is Kazarian. Uh, you know, he has uh, definitely been on a mission, a violent mission for sure. He will take any opportunity to make the elite pay for what happened to, you know, and the way he sees it, the Young Bucks just throughout years and years of friendship with Daniels and Kazarian, over the course of, of just a few minutes. You know, and I understand that, that Frank is upset about that, yeah, but you know what, these things happen. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, I, I saw a veteran told me years ago, when, by the time you retire from this business, Taz, you're gonna be able to count your true friends on one hand. You know what, I don't even need all five fingers. The guy wasn't wrong, I won't say his name. How about that? Kazarian? You get my, uh, I get my point here. So, it's, I, that you have no fingers on your left hand. Club Jones. Right now, he's got to try and break that grip, and he does, Frankie does, of oh, Big JD. Stepping on the back of Drake's knee, trying to bring him down to the canvas. And Drake rolls through. Maintaining the wrist lock of his own. And that body weight advantage that JD has. And, you know, JD is, what he is, he's a straightforward guy. He's got a drop to hold. Straight, straightforward guy, big, burly, ball fight type guy. You know, that's, that's a blue collar badass. If you will. A blue, that's a, actually, we should stop calling him that. That's his nickname. Uh, Moniker. I, Moniker. Right, not La Monica. Anyway, uh, oh, look at this. Almost went around the oh, wow. it? Yeah. Great transition. Oh, what a shot, dude. You hear that? And, oh, so, and a, Peter, uh, Peter Avalon barking like a, like a chihuahua. Yeah. Perhaps a teacup poodle. Mean trial with a disease. And that disease is called high fashion. For which there is no cure. <laughs> Swing and a miss by Drake. Oh, digging right hands by Kazarian. And Drake doing the smart thing, just takes the side headlock. Slow him down, right? Get that headlock slowed down. But Kazarian comes back off the rope for the drop kick. See, Kazarian's such the veteran, he kept his eye on the outside. He knows that some of JD's buddies are out there. The wingmen, oh my God, those manicured fingers. Back elbow backs Drake off to the corner. Cesar Benoni. Oh, Cesar, hold on a minute. Oh, referee. Oh, Mike Posey has just ejected the wingman from ringside. Oh, why? He's wearing burnt metal like jeans. Oh, but oh. JD Drake. What a shot. Powerful right hand across the jaw of Kazarian. That almost put out Kazarian's lights. That was some punch. 
It's not often you see Kazarian get starched like that. No. You see right there, you see Jaden Drake putting all his body weight for a moment on the throat, second rope of Kazarian in the back of his body. Drake doing the smart thing, though, not getting distracted by the fact the wingmen were ejected. He's borne the pressure on Kazarian. You're right. And Kazarian knows that there may be, may be an opportunity here. Oh, maybe not. Maybe Drake. The atomic drop. Oh, he's not done. And just easily muscling Frank Kazarian around, drops the headbutt, hooks the near leg. Kazarian kicking out. And I've been slammed, body slammed by big guys like JD. And I'm telling you, it looks like a basic pro wrestling move. It hurts like the Dickens. I, put I a, promise. Put a little extra mustard yeah. on it. Dude, you know, you've been slammed. I mean, <laughs> you get slammed by a guy with some height and power. It hurts a lot. A lot, a lot. Kazarian trying to soften up JD Drake. Drake reverses a hammer throw, sends Kazarian into the corner. Yeah, Frankie's hurting right now for sure. Frankie Kazarian, you know he was, uh, you know he was coming into this matchup with his eyes open. He knows what a competitor J.D. Drake is, but I think Drake perhaps showing Kazarian a little bit more than Frankie expected. Yeah, I think you're right. And I, look, I, look, you know Kazarian as long as I know him. Both know him a long time, and and you know, Kazarian is a oh wait a minute wait 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 whoa, whoa. roll up. He's a guy who's not going to look past many guys. You know he's he's a he's a prep nut. He's going to prepare for everybody he competes against. But JD's bringing a fight, but right now Kazarian's in control. I think sometimes. Oh, Kazarian coming back with the flying forearm. Really stepped into the clothesline. Whoa, the power! Powers shown off there by Kazarian. Sometimes for a guy like JD Drake, as Kazarian elevates the leg drop, it's easy to to look past him because the the wingmen, the antics, the the clothes, the everything. Right, right. But the high fashion. Yeah, at, at its core. Competitor like JD Drake is very, very dangerous. Kazarian doing a good job of neutralizing Drake's power. Camera shot was dangerous. Kazarian leg drop across the back of the head. JD Drake brought into the ring the hard way. Kazarian knows he's got some momentum brewing, brewing right now. Well, you gotta be careful. You don't want to trade chops with. J.D. Drake, we saw that chop early on Kazarian from J.D. Kazarian off the middle rope, went for the crossbody. Drake making it look easy with uh -oh. the catch, but Kazarian elevates out, but J.D. Drake, that leaping boot, cracked Kazarian right across the jaw. This could be the big cannonball oh. in the corner. Oh my God. Just crushed Frankie's head. Frankie Kazarian in a real spot of trouble. Struggling to get to his feet. JD Drake perched on the middle rope. Drake Ooh. for that middle rope leg lariat. Kazarian just ducking down out of pure instinct alone. That might have been the opening that Frankie needs. And the cross face chicken wing is locked in. Here is your winner, Frankie. Kazarian. And J.D. Drake left with no choice but to tap out. Yeah, really good uh, cross-face chicken wing. Had the grapes in, legs, legs in to get some control to immobilize the lower body. Taz, break this down for us. Well, well not, that was, not the cannonball. I know, that really is. Right here, right here. Once you get the legs in like that, those grapes, that immobilizes the hips. That's where the inside of your quads and your knees are. So that keeps his hips at bay, which he can't turn. He can't turn. JD can't turn to his stomach. And you have to cross his chicken wing, and it's done. You, you, know, you have to tap out. Frankie Kazarian, the elite hunter, victorious on dark. One of the most unique submission match style guys you're going to see. An amazing athlete. And Helico is next. Scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Johannesburg, South Africa, weighing 205 pounds, on Helico. On Helico, being brought to the ring by Big Money Matt. Matt Hardy, the proud leader of HFO, Hardy Family Office.
Taz, when you have a, when you have a faction, when you have a group of individuals, is it usually the leader that determines the rink music, or is it up to the individual? Well, Team Taz, it's a collaborative effort. I can't speak for Mr. Hardy, who's a very close personal friend of mine, but I can just speak on Team Taz. We collaborate on a daily basis about music. Very, very active text thread. Yes. Uh, Team Taz members. Yes. A lot of texting. We have a text uh, guy that does it for us. And Helico vibing. His opponent from Punjab, India, weighing 200 pounds, Arjun Singh. Arjun Singh making his debut here tonight on AEW Dark. Well, Mr. Singh's gonna have his hands full here with Angelico is just a, uh, a mat, mat work specialist, submission specialist. And, it's, and a style of submission wrestling yes. that is so unique to Mexico, that Yave style, very difficult to prepare for. Yeah, but we don't know much about Singh, so let's see how this thing uh, works out, you know? Matt Hardy coaching great the coach. floor. Great coaching bow by Matt Hardy right there, giving proper direction to Ring General himself right there in Helico with that Hamelock. Arjun Singh reaching behind, escapes underneath. And Helico so dangerous from so many different positions. Just be careful trading holds with this guy here. You know, you trade holds with Helico. I'm telling you, it's a dangerous, dangerous deal. Arjun Singh, I think. Went to try to sprawl out of that, but Angelico maintained control of the head. Arjun Singh. They counted out. Turn the tables here. Doing a good job. Keeping Look Angelico, that. well, Beautiful. I was going to say keeping Angelico wrestling defensively, but Angelico there, a little bit of a flourish. He's a freaking magician, I'm telling you, Angelico is. So smooth into that side headlock. Got an arm trap with a front face lock. He doesn't even have a clasp. The way he does it, it's so unique. He doesn't even grip his fingers. Well, he's got, he's got such wingspan that, yeah. you know, oh. oh. <laughs> now just making, the, making light of his opponent. I don't think Mr. Singh appreciates being disrespected like that. That's how good he is. That's how good he is. High face That's from Angelico. Swing and a miss. Uppercut. Consecutive uppercuts. See Matt Hardy trying to talk in Helico. Say, listen, you're going to be fine. Everything's good. Blah 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 blah. Arjun Singh looking to keep the pressure on. Arjun whipping to the rope. And Helico swinging a miss again. Singh comes in, drops and Helico to the mat. Back elbow. Uh oh. Scoop and the slam by Arjun Singh. Good job by Arjun right there. Go for the cover. That was it. it took a little too long. I had a feeling I was going to kick out of that. It took a little too long on that cover. Arjun Singh maybe. Uh, you know, under the, under the spotlight here, it took a moment to kind of realize what he did, but ooh, he can't afford to give Angelico any window of opportunity. No, super crafty is Angelico. And now, oh boy. Uh, 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 oh. The legs there are across the Navarro death roll. Angelico, and now hammering down with that left boot, Arjun Singh forced to tap out. Gotta tap out. Your winner, Angelico. Great job right there by Angelico. Singh had a pretty decent outing for himself, but not enough. And look at Hardy, so proud of Angelico. And that was the, the beginning of the end for Arjun Singh. He took his eye off the ball momentarily, and that allowed Angelico to seize in that Navarro death roll. Everyone's an investment for Matt Hardy that, that deals with Hardy and with the HFO. Hold on. Look at this. That's George Joel on the outside. Matt Hardy made George Joel a very compelling know, offer this last week. Last forever. Time is ticking. Time is money. So make up your mind. If you want to be an AEW star, you better make a decision. Wow. Well, sometimes you got to put a little pressure. I've made offers to guys uh, to be part of Team Taz. You got to put a little pressure on them. That's a lot for George Joel to think about being invited to join the HFO by Matt Hardy himself. But Angelico victorious here tonight on Dark.
Here with the bad boy, Joey Janela. And Joey, I'm going to start off this interview with the same question that I've been asking you the past few times we have been together. What type of injury update can you give us about your return to the ring? Mm. All right. Well, let me ask you about this. Last time I interviewed you, Sonny Kiss was on set, shoved you down, said that your tag team was over. Have you had a chance to talk with Sonny since then? Obviously, this interview is going nowhere, so let me try to cheer you up a little bit. Got a new go-go bar opened up nearby. It's the Melon Farm. We can go like we did to the Nip Factory. I'm just frustrated. The number one ranked native beast, Nyla Rose, with Vicky Guerrero in her corner next, here on Dark. This contest. Excuse me! What, what does it even start, Ted? I said excuse me! Yes, I'm not quite sure. I'll think of an answer, though. Justin's a glutton for punishment. Yeah, you know what? You're right, he is. <laughs> Justin, stop being a glutton. Justin Roberts, I like your approach, but I'm gonna love your departure out of my ring! <laughs> it's on. Pay attention and wake up, because it is time for the woman who loves to break Barbies! Please welcome! Well said, Vicky. Vicky doesn't even need a microphone. I just want to yell. No, that microphone wasn't actually even on. <laughs> That's the great irony there. But Nyla Rose, the native beast, the number one ranked contender in the AEW women's division. Former AEW women's world champion. And if Nyla has anything to say about it, the next AEW. The next AEW women's world champion. Oh, you were watching the lyric video for this on YouTube too? Nyla, 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 Beast Rose, Nyla, Native, Native, Nyla, Beast Rose, no, no. Sorry. And her opponent, Holiday. Holiday making it. AEW debut here tonight. Holiday, former tag team partner of Thunder Rosa. Now is a chance here to compete against the number one ranked competitor in the AEW Women's Division. Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero, of course, tomorrow night on Dynamite. Our return to being live on Wednesday night. Nyla Rose and Vicky will team up to take on Dr. Britt Baker, the AEW Women's World Champion and Rebel in a tag team matchup. Yeah, this is tough right here because you're dealing with Nyla Rose right now, and you know she wants to just roll into Dynamite, into anything with Brit with nothing but violent momentum. Nyla. Oh! Right on the back of the head. Such power exhibited by Nyla Rose. Nyla dead. Get the back elbow in the corner and a lariat there from Nyla. And Taz, a lot of people speculated why. Vicky would choose to be in a tag team match with Nyla Rose to take on Brit, oh. Dr. Britt Baker yeah. and, uh, and Rebel. Right. But I think Vicky wants to, to weaken oh, yeah. of course. Dr. Britt Baker. She wants to soften her up. It's very smart to have the native beast. Oh, oh my God. Nyla Rose in the ring at any point she can yeah. with Britt Baker. That's the key. It, it, tag team or not, it's smart just to, to your point, you know, weaken the champion, weaken, weaken Dr. Britt Baker. The Beast Bomb by Nyla Rose. There is your winner, the native beast, Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose wasting no time here tonight on Dark. She has her sights set on Dr. Britt Baker and the AEW Women's World Championship. Tomorrow night live on TNT. 
You see right here, right on back of the head. And then the beach bomb, look at this, boom. And I'll tell you what, AEW Women's World Champion, Dr. Britt Baker, beware. Native Beast is on your set. And tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite returns live to TNT 8, 7 Central. Coming up next right here on Dark, Sonny Kiss goes one on one against the Blade with Bunny and TH2 in his corner. This next battle is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Buffalo, New York, weighing 228 pounds, the Blade. Taz, before we get into this match, what about happened just a few nights ago on our special Saturday Night Dynamite when the Blade and TH2 attacked Orange Cassidy after the conclusion of the Bunny and Chris Statland? I personally thought it was great. HFO sending a message, I mean, well done towards the best friends for sure. Heavy, man. And his opponent from Jersey City, New Jersey, weighing 188 pounds, the Concrete Rose, Sunny Kiss. And Sunny Kiss flying solo by Sonny's choice tonight, Taz. Sonny had enough of Joey Janela wow. letting Sonny down, going out partying with Alex Marvez. Yeah, yeah, and who would ever do that, by the way? Uh, that's a whole different problem. Who would ever party with either of those guys? You know, Marvez or Janela, but I digress. But Sonny's been left hanging by Joey Janela so many times. Hey, it happened with Team Taz. You know, Sonny was left hanging, and my guys had to, had to beat the hell out of Sonny. That's just the way it goes. But no, you're right. If you're Sonny Kiss, you can't rely on Joey Janela. It's pretty well documented to me at this point. Collar and elbow tie up, center of the ring. Blade just takes the side headlock versus in. Hammerlock now. Sonny, though, steps through very fluidly. Yeah, and Blade's a dangerous, dangerous man for sure. No matter if he and Butcher are beating the heck out of somebody or if a Blade's going solo, it don't matter. Hence why someone like Matt Hardy and HFO, he's a main guy in that group, is Blade. Well, and Blade picked up a very impressive victory last night on Elevation, defeating Chuck Taylor, one that, of the good friends. Dude, it was very impressive. And Chuck's a tough guy to beat for sure. And, uh, you know, best friends, uh, you know, get beat up right there by Chuck losing from, from Blade, as you said. Yeah, I was going to say one of the, the good friends of Orange Cassidy. Oh, they, so they, they want people to think I didn't know their, their tag team was the best people friends. might at you? They might. Oh, it's happened them. before, Taz. Oh, I hate <laughs> The Blake going to work on Sonny Ooh. Kiss, though. Just kicks are hard, man. Decision strikes. The Blade, the mercenary, driving the knee into the side of Sonny's head. Well, precision, I think, is a key, and that's what Blade is. You know, everything, as you know with him, is on point. His physique. His intensity, his focus, his ability. His tan. Huge his tan. I'm a huge fan of this guy. I mean, how could you not be? He's a tremendous athlete. Look at Sonny fighting back hard. Blade trying to create some distance. Whoa. Sonny comes back, lays in some right hands, and the leg lariat. Sonny kiss. Now coming in for the rapid kiss missile. Ooh. A rolling elbow strike. Blade might be out, man. Yeah, that was a tight shot. A forearm right on the butt of Blade. It's not often you see Blade retreating from a big, uh, big offense, uh, offensive flurry like that. Sonny Kiss is not done, my friend. Sonny Ooh, put on the brakes. Blade sends Sonny back into Ooh. the ring inadvertently. Wow. Sonny came through with a powerful drop I kick. Mean, you would think that coming off a victory on, on Chuck Taylor that, that Blade would have momentum right now, but that's not the case. Watch Sonny out. Over the top, taking down Blade and TH2. Definitely three members of HFO getting dropped by Sonny Kiss. Take another look at this as Sonny elevates over the top. Excellent stuff right there by Sonny Kiss. Blade is reeling and a rocking to steal a cliche. Sonny keeping the pressure on. Not letting Blade get 
back into this fight. Smart, smart move, smart offense by Sonny Kiss. Yeah, got to keep that pressure on someone like Blade. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh! Blade! Ooh, hot shot right there. A really rough landing for Sonny Kiss. Sometimes it just takes one move to shut down your opponent. And now you see Blade Smart getting Sonny out of the ring. So I'm assuming, there you go, HFO is doing the dirty work right now. Bunny, Jack Evans, and Angelico swarming all over Sonny Kiss on the outside as the Blade, you can see this, the smile on his face. He loves it when a plan comes together. And you gotta, look, you gotta give credit to the mastermind of Matt Hardy, the leader of HFO. Big money match, just putting all these athletes together. Just a, a unique group, and it's tremendous. As someone who lead, a leader of, of athletes like myself in Team Taz, I tip my cap to my old friend, Mr. Hardy. Matt Hardy making a lot of money moves. He's big Money Jones. That's He's what? Big Money Matt, actually. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Blade. Massive neck breaker. And Blade, you can see, once again, just smirking, taking his time, really relishing in the punishment he is dishing out to Sonny Kiss. Yeah, because you know, Blade knows that he is in control and Sonny's in, in grave danger. So he's showing that poise. Look at that clothesline there. Showing that poise of just, hey, I'm not going to rush into nothing right now. I got control. And I think Blade also comfortable in the fact that he knows Sonny's got no backup. This team. Right. I Joey think Sonny has no backup. I don't want to fix your grammar, sir. I'm, just, I, I'm big into vernacular and diction. Sonny has no backup. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a product of the New York City's public school system, my friend. Come on. You're from Detroit, right? PSFTW? Is that, <laughs> is that where you went? You're from Detroit. No, yes. it's different. It's kind of the same thing. Taz never known for a malapropism. Whoa, what Sonny that? lands on beat, bridge back, but Ooh. there again, the neck breaker. Looks the knee Not landing. Oh. No. How about Sonny Excalibur kicking out of that? Sonny is triple tough. Yeah. Borrow a cliche. We've seen it on many an occasion. Oh, you're but right. Right now, the, the numbers could play a factor in this. Sonny getting stomped on the outside by TH2 and the bunny. Oh, nice counter, nice counter by a kiss. Swing and a miss. Oof. Big rolling elbow strike. Corkscrew elbow strike. Drop salt. Laid in a bit of trouble. Sonny. Sits out with the jawbreaker. Yeah, Blade is rocked. Flipping clothesline. Sonny throwing the entire body into it. Here comes Sonny. Oh! Splitting leg drop. Hooks the far leg. Blade kicks out. Wow, a lot of toughness right there for Blade to kick out. That was a lot of impact on the middle of his body by Sonny Kiss. Sonny can't let Blade get back into this match. Got to keep Blade biting off the back foot. Ooh. Blade allowed that moment to recover. Took advantage of it with that back elbow. Oh, slip by, look at that counter. Roll up. Great roll up by Sonny. But Blade, oh. that knee lift. Yeah, Sonny had a slight hesitation and caught a knee. Cazadora rolling through. Sonny sits back, almost caught the three count. That's a tight cover, Excalibur, as you know. It's tough to kick out of that, but it happens. Especially when your opponent <laughs> right. sits back with your legs. Exactly, man. Blade power oh. slam. Damn. Low scooping power slam. Sonny might have landed on the back of the head a little bit. Such tremendous snap on that power slam by the blade. That was nasty. Gut wrench. What do we got here? Gut wrench. Oh. Dr. Bomb by the blade. One, two. Three. Here is your winner, the Blade. Yeah, the Blade with a Dr. Bomb. Made famous by the late great Dr. Death Steve Williams. I've been a victim of that move, by the way. <laughs> Look at this, power oh, slam. Yeah, that was the beginning of the end, Taz. And then the gut wrench, the power bomb, the Dr. Bomb. Scored the victory for Blade. Two consecutive impressive victories in a row. First Chuck Taylor last night on Elevation. Now here tonight, the Blade getting the victory over Sonny Kiss. And they're and, not oh, done. They're all TH, over. Look at this. the bunny, the Blade. Well, I, I guess they realize Sonny Kiss. We talked about Janela. Janela's never out to help him. So you know what? Let's beat up Sonny. I get it.
This is an absolute mugging happening in the center of the ring. Whoa, whoa, what the hell? Oh, look at this, it's Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. That's friends out here. Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. Chuck hasn't forgotten about last night. And, oh, and look now, oh. conveniently, conveniently here, Joey Janela. Janela's out here ready to... Come on. He's a mess. Come on. Come on. Let's go. He's been out partying, man. He's, he's look at him. He's tan, though. Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor running off TH2 and the blade. Joey Janela acting like he did something. Yeah, he is. Right, you're right. <laughs> That's friends did. Something tells me that this rivalry between Orange Cassidy and the blade is far from over. I think you might be right about that for sure. HFO getting out of Dodge here. And that's the smart thing to do. Pick your spots, and that's why you see an HFO getting out of here. Oh, oh. Sonny wants no part of Joey Janela, and you know what? Rightfully so for Sonny. Yeah. You don't need Joey. Nobody needs Joey. No. Maybe Hate Alex Marvez. Julia Hart with the Varsity Blondes in her corner in action next on Dark. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Bloomington, Minnesota, Julia Hart. As before this match gets underway, I want to remind everybody that AEW Dynamite returns to Wednesdays live tomorrow night, 8, 7 central on TNT. And we will see one half of the Varsity Blondes, Brian Pillman Jr., challenge Miro for the TNT Championship. And for opponent from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Ashley Dambois. Ashley Dambois making her return to AEW Dark here tonight. Great opportunity for Ashley. Should be a good matchup here. I mean, uh, we've seen Ashley Dumbaz compete before. She's, you know, she, she needs to get some experience as the Julia Hart, but both these ladies, uh, you know, they want to be winners. They want to be on top, top of the heap if they can here in AEW. So, you know, they both want it. So you want it, you know, you put some hard work in, and you can see just by their physiques and everything and their ability they have. Yeah, Julia really not got that control there. Wrist lock and the escape. Ashley, now Ashley down blossom, top wrist lock into a side headlock. I think she didn't have the entire grip, so smart move. She abandoned ship, went Direct. the side headlock. Ooh, comes back with a shoulder tackle. You could see the quads of Ashley down bras. She's got some power in those quads and those glutes. And that Whoa. hip toss by Julia Hart. Using Ashley's speed against her drop kick. It's down one, just barely a one count. See if uh, Julia Hart can keep keep something going here against Ashley Dumbraz. Well, that well placed knee in its stomach, cutting off the momentum of Julia Hart. The scoop and the slam. Ashley Dumbraz taking a moment to uh, to appeal to the audience here, but time could be better spent putting the pressure on Julia Hart. And the Varsity Blondes on the outside, filming, yelling at the lady. That's very gentlemanly, like Brian. Gentlemen here for damn it. Hey, you know damn it, I mean, I mean damn it. Yeah. You're, you're not wrong. I'm not. Don't yell at the lady, please. So Dembois swinging a miss. Julia Hart. Close line. No oh. one. Intercepting. And now the kick across the chest. Julia Hart. Hammer throw. Sends Ashley Dembois into the corner. Julia Hart comes in. Well, hell of an athlete, that's we know Julia Hart. She is a uh, watch out. Ooh. Two-time national champion in the sport of cheerleading, so she can go. And the Bulldog with the split, adding a little extra to that. Uh oh she's not done. Julia Hart's not done. Standing moonsault press. Julia Hart covers. Lateral press. Dambois able to kick out, and I think had Julia neutralized those legs of Ashley Dambois, she might have picked up the victory there, Taz. I think you might be right. I was about to say it might have been an upset victory, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think this is kind of an even Steven type matchup. Ooh. Ooh. Or an even Stephanie. It's two females. Maybe Steven. Even Stephanie. 
Well, no. Oh, whatever. Splitting leg drop there by Julia Hart. Oh. And the win! The winner of this match, Julia Hart. Julia Hart with the victory right there. And she's Griff Garrison, one half of the Boston Blondes. Very impressed. Brian Pillman. Impressed also, I think. Let's see. Oh, that, man, that thrust kick. Stop Ashley her tracks. Look at that shot. I love directing from here. I tell him get that shot. The fireworks here tonight. Well, there will be fireworks next week in Miami, Florida, when AEW returns to the road with Road Ranger. Tickets available for AEW Dynamite Live next Wednesday night, 8 7 Central on TNT. Go to AEWTIX.com. Join us in Miami. It'll be a great evening. After that, it'll be Fighter Fest, two consecutive weeks. July 14th in Austin, Texas. July 21st in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. I'll and tell you what, they might be blowing up fireworks tomorrow if Brian Pillman Jr. becomes a TNT champion and beats Miro. Big pot of pyrotechnics, right wrong. That'd be huge. That'd be gigantic. Unless they spend all their money on pyro here tonight. Six-man tag team match. Trios Jones, baby. Dark Orders, Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, Colt Cabana. They go head up against Private Party and Jack Evans. This is a trios tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a total combined weight of 535 pounds, the team of Jack Evans and Private Party. Private Party coming straight from the club to compete here tonight on AEW Dark. And Jack Evans from the heavens. Matt Hardy in the Hardy family office will be in action against the Dark Order. In just a few moments. Join the Dark Order. And their opponents. At a total combined weight of 684 pounds, Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, and Colt Boom Boom Cabana. Big time main event match here on AEW Dark. I mean, is there enough? Is there enough of them in Dark Water? All in the ring? Why is this legal? Why, why does Matt Hardy have to be disrespected like this in HFO? Why? why? They're outnumbered immensely. They look at the, the amount of people in the ring, these men. The Dark Order, they, they, they bully everyone. They're mean to everybody. They make fun of people on, on, on BTE. There are, not right. There are just as many, there are just as many yeah. HFO members as there are Dark Order members. Actually, But more. not out here at the moment. It's outnumbered. I see Mark Quinn. I see Jack Evans. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't see. I don't see all of HFO. Am I not seeing things? Well, you see Dark Order actually going up through the tunnel now. Now it's HFO. They have the numbers advantage. There's four four well, members of HFO out there. Only three Dark Order it's members. It's about time. How about that? Law and order returned to AEW Dark here tonight. Dun dun. Hulk Cabana I had a long talk with him earlier. Did you? Painful. What you talk about? He stopped me in the hallway. He asked you to. Nah, he was upset with me. Did he ask you to be on his podcast? He actually did. Uh, we talked about his podcast, the anonymous too. You want to plug it for him? Good. Thank you, buddy. Press the anonymous by Colt Cabana. Right. So I, 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 you know, I understand that. Available Colts where are, better podcasts are sold. Colt's a pioneer in the podcast game for sure. I mean, uh, there's no doubt about that. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry has a podcast now, but I digress. Oof! Colt Cabana. Double palm thrust to the chest of Jack Evans. Did you guys sort out your differences? We have no differences. Why do people think we have differences? You said it was a painful conversation. Oh, no, but he's annoying. That's I like Colt, but he's a pain in the ass. I'm just being honest. Well, I like Colt, and I don't find him to be a pain in the ass. Well, because you're a pain in the ass. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that, but that's how I feel. Hey, you know what, Taz? Truer words never been spoken. Oh, I'll tell you what. Double Jack shoulder Edwards. tackle. Yeah, he got lit up right there. Evil Uno with some new ring gear. Oof, need a road map to look at it. Look like special. Look at that. He's got a lot going on there, huh? Big fan of geometric shapes. <laughs> yeah, all over hey, here. Who's not? Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Mark Quinn diving cross body. Beautiful spring ball into that big cross body had by Quinn. And he covered about 60% of the ring. You ain't lying, buddy. He tags out to Isaiah Cassidy. Isaiah rocking a pink do rag. You got to be a bad, well, I don't want to say the word, a bad son of a gun to be rocking a, a, a pink do rag. I respect that. You think Austin and Colton can rock? No. Oh. Great combo there by Dark Order. Diving cross uh -oh, body. Uh oh. Evans intercepted in midair. Oh, look at that. Stu Grayson. Power slam. Kind of cheating, wouldn't you say? Three on one. But I digress. Oh, wasn't that what the HFO was trying to do to Stu Grayson? Well, because HFO was still shook because they were outnumbered earlier before this match even started. Mark Quinn, by the way, beautiful hair. I mean, I can't even explain that type of uh, a mohawk hawk type of thing with the rolls rings, and the colors. Loops, yeah. and so a lot of work was into that. A lot of work. Kid Crush-esque. <laughs> I mean, Arnie. Oh! Isaiah Cassidy blindsiding Stu Grayson. Yeah, get in their face, Isaiah. I respect that. Look at Cabana, cheater. What the hell? That's great. Bryce Remsburg very quickly losing control of this match is the HFO attacking Stu Grayson in the corner. Overwhelming him, using their numbers advantage. Grayson trying to make the crawl. Isaiah Cassidy. Yeah, it's rare, as you know, like with Stu Grayson to get the upper hand on him. As you know, he's a tough dude. Man. He most certainly is. Isaiah Cassidy comes in with a boot after Mark Quinn was delivering those shots to the ribcage from the outside. Uh-oh. Grayson to over the, the top for the sunset flip. You heard Mark Quinn give him some coaching. He said, grab the rope, grab the rope. That was smart. And, and, wow. Just Good job. Getting the referee's attention diverted. Man, I'm so envious of Matt Hardy, Big Money Matt. Get his hands on private party. Man, I should have offered those guys at team tennis. Damn it. Isaiah Cassidy. I blame Starks. <laughs> Isaiah Cassidy could be wearing an orange do rag tonight. You know what? You're right. I used to wear them, by the way, back in the day. I did. Choke that dudes all over the place in Queens and Brooklyn with an orange do rag. Go on YouTube. Watch out. Oof. Belly to belly suplex. Actually on YouTube right now. I said go on YouTube. We're on YouTube. What are we doing? Yeah, wait, wait till wait till dark is over oh, before yeah, you yeah, go yeah. searching. Of course, absolutely. Great points. Screwing with our monetization task. <laughs> As always. It's new. Ooh, drop kick. And oh! poison Rana. God, that move terrifies me. Gotta be it. Whoa, no! Stu Grayson. How the hell did Grayson kick out of that? I was speechless after that reverse work on Rana. Poison Rana is a brutal move. I've never taken it in my prime. Or any time. Or any time. Well, one, well, yeah, no, that was just one time, but that's a difficult situation. It was on vacation. It was a parasailing accident. It gets crazy in Cape Cod, bro. It's it nuts up there. Big parasailing community in Cape yeah. Cod. The mini golf spots, nuts. People get bombed. Jack Evans. Oh, oh, my God. Jack Evans just got bombed over the top rope. You're not kidding. Evans landed really hard. And Dark Order's like, get over here, Stu. Tag us in. Great heads up move by Uno and Cabana. Dropping off the apron, avoiding contact. Grayson. Wow, I got to give the devil his due. Great job by Stu Grayson right there. That was really impressive. Back flipping kick makes the there tag out to Evil Uno. Uno. Uno, double clothesline. And now just a forearm shiver. Great job by Evil Uno. To the midsection, almost a toe kick to Mark Quinn. Swing and a miss by Quinn. Uno, stop up, Hurricane Rana. Impressive. Shut him down. He's always impressive, Uno. Matt Hardy not happy with the way things are going for his trio here tonight. Oh, no. Evil Uno. Oh. Neck breaker from the shoulders. Deep hook. No. Oh, right, you heard Big Money Matt before yelling, shut him down, shut him down. He realized that Evil Uno was cooking on Crisco. Roll. I would say that. more on beef tally. But... <laughs> Cabana. Oh, Manhattan man. drop, drop Manhattan. kick. Manhattan, yeah, big, actually. 
And Frog oh. splashed by Stu Grayson. His momentum carried him over. But Jack Evans. Excellent job by Quinn. Jack Evans might have been put away there were it not I think for the he intervention was. of Mark Quinn. Ooh. Roll up by Evans. One, two, no. Wow, the added leverage there by Private Party. What a match this has been. Seriously, it's been great. Great main event here on Dark. As the combination attack by Stu Grayson. Oh, right in the face. And Cabana oh. comes in. Big, massive clothesline drop kick there by Mark Quinn. It's time to oh. play game. People are getting jacked up here. The boot caught. Cassidy comes over the top with Yenzigiri. And mocking the Dark Order salute. I like it, Isaiah. I like it. Jack it up, take your ass up. I got it. I got it. Calling for the juice. The Jack and Juice. Will be the first time for Jack. Jack Evans was, was trying for the runner, but Cabana intercepted. Oh! Driving knee strike, Chicago skyline. Colts got him, Superman. Cabana covers, deep hooks, and the victory. There are your winners, Dark. Order. Well, I have to admit it, excellent job. Excellent match, by the way, by all six of these men. Excellent match, but, you know, you got someone, a veteran, who's got so much ring experience to Cole Cabana. He was literally, you can't hesitate. You can't make these little mistakes or have little hiccups against someone like a Cabana with all that experience that you get for it. Yeah, it was really when uh, Isaiah Cassidy and Jack Evans started try trying to call a play up on the top right. rope. Usually, you, you do that before it gets to that point, Taz. Yeah, no, but yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it has, we haven't seen Private Party tagging up and whatnot, getting involved much with Jack Evans, obviously, you know, from TH2. It just, but it happens. Well, a great match to cap off AEW Dark tonight, and we can't wait to be back live tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT for AEW Dynamite. Next here on AEW Dark, the captain, Sean Dean, in action against JDX. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 195 pounds, Sean Dean. The captain, Sean Dean, returning to action here tonight on AEW Dark. Been a while since we've seen the captain. Been a while. It has. He's only had one match this year, 2021. Well, he's been very busy. He's constantly training, and he's uh, very busy. His opponent weighing 215 pounds, JDX. JDX, as you can see on the screen, making his AEW debut. Put together this young man opportunity for both of these men to pick up the first victory, put the first notch in the win column here in AEW. Captain and JDX, both men hailing from Chicago, Illinois. A little shy town battle, as they say. Chicago will be the home of AEW's All Out. Oh, I love, I love going to Chicago. I love that city. I, I, I've had many opportunities to wrestle there. I've got massive pops. I'm over like we're over there. Team Taz is over huge there also. Just would so you, would you say you got a Julia Hart? I don't know if it was that type of uh, pop, but it was big. I'll tell you that right now. John Dean. Oh, up to the middle rope. Watch Faked. Out. Now whoa, whoa, over it. the top. The roll up. Two. No. GDX ran into that a little quick, but look at that, he counted to a small package. Inside cradle. GDX swinging a miss. Swinging an interception, I should say. Backslide by Sean Dean. Captain. Big arm drag, deep, deep arm drag right there. To a traditional arm ball, well done by the cap. Hanging on, really putting the pressure on that shoulder of JDX. JDX though. Trying to get back to a vertical position. Looked like he was going to sweep under, but instead rolls through. Oh, nice. Well done. I rolled through into that underarm spin or like an arm drag. But Sean Dean brushing off the dropkick attempt and grabbing 
the arm. No. Oh, grabbing the arm drag and then hanging on, no. maintaining control of that left shoulder, the left arm, JDX. Yeah, JDX using his hips right there to get a head scissor. Smart how he used his hips to get momentum. Stalemate here. Standoff. Well, yeah, neither guy wanted to rush into anything. This has been a feeling out process between both competitors. Bypass there, but oh! Back elbow, drop step by JDX. Manhattan drop. JDX, oh, pump kick to the side of the head, turns. Sean Dean inside oh. out, leaping flatliner. This could be it. Covered. Well, got a lot of energy, this young man, JDX, for sure. Put a lot of power into that flatliner. I like how he's taking his time right here, not rushing into anything. You, you could almost witness him thinking, what am I gonna do next right here? I'm not gonna get too flustered that I didn't get the win on the flatliner, but you know what? Let me bring a shoulder into the gut. GX really looking to make the most of this opportunity here tonight on AEW Dark. He's looking pretty good right now, the young man, throwing those big haymakers. Overhand chop. Captain by the captain blocking those right hands now firing back the left the right <laughs> steps in with the clothesline ready to see someone get lit up or left and a right you don't see that much captain ducks under and the neck breaker JDX in trouble here the captain's feeling it Jonathan blowing his level let's see if he's got mine Ooh. Rough drop kick in the corner. JDX on roller skates. JDX doesn't even know where the heck he's at right now. Captain. Uh-oh. Captain calling for attention. Pay attention. Attention. There's a salute. Big elbow drop. JDX. Struggling to his feet after that elbow drop. Captain, he's got the arm captured. Almost like a tequila sunrise. Oh, nice. Sugar hold combo here. The margarita for the captain, Sean Dean, sec secures the submission victory. There is your winner, Sean Dean. It's a task when you miss. Tequila with sugar, you get, yes. you get a margarita. Oh, I know a lot about alcohol and drinking. I drink heavily on a regular basis, but I digress. Right now, you see that drop kick in the corner, nowhere to JDX to go. Good job right there, all locked up. Excellent work right there. You gotta tap out. Sean Dean with the win. The captain, Sean Dean, victorious via submission here tonight on AEW Dark. Coming up next here on AEW Dark, tag team action as the wingmen, Cesar Bononi and Ryan Nemeth in action. This is a tag team bout set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Pretty Peter Avalon at a combined weight of 467 pounds, the team of Cesar Bononi and the Hollywood Hawk, Ryan Nemeth. A little bit of, little bit of miscommunication on the wingman salute there. Yeah, well, it's, it, they're still working on it for weeks. But uh, listen, they are very handsome men. I mean, they, the, the, the fashion sense, thanks to Avalon with the yellow shirt, that's a custom shirt he had made in Paris, he told me. Paris, that's Paris to you. Paris, Texas. Texas. A combined yeah. 383 pounds, the team of Sage Scott and Jake St. Patrick. Sage Scott on your left, Jake St. Patrick on your right, making the return to tag team action on dark. My oh, man has got a flak jacket on his own. He's ready in case there's a shootout, he's ready. Or if there's 16 minutes of fireworks going on. The <laughs> Hollywood Hunk, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Hollywood Hunk, that's St. Patrick. Jake St. Patrick starting things off for their respective duos. Find me carry right there on the Hollywood Hunk. Great folk style wrestling background possessed by Ryan Nemeth. You wouldn't know it to look at him, a man that hunky Taz. Uh, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks. For those that don't those know, folk style is, is 
you know, collegiate wrestling, high school wrestling, uh, the basic wrestling, uh, not freestyle or Greco. It's both folk style. Nice little mat return, blocked the leg. Good job by the Hollywood Hunk. So if he had a singling on a headgear, then he would look the part, as I was saying, just because he's so handsome. Yeah, actually. All right, cool. I get distracted by uh, by Ryan on his face. Well, you could get distracted by the size of Cesar Bononi. He's just a, a gigantic man, and Brazilian man, a big Brazilian man. You see how the expression on Cesar's face just turned ice cold yeah, after no, that dropkick attempt by Jake St. Patrick. Oh, Cesar's got a bad temper. And he's a big, powerful son of a gun. And the hoss toss sending St. Patrick across the ring. Ryan Nemeth on the apron, so impressed. Oh, Cesar is a hoss by every sense of the word. Look at Nemeth. It takes a lot of gumption to wear iridescent shorts on YouTubes. I'll tell you that right now. And he's got he, that does, he does it off YouTube as well. Yeah, he does. I've seen him walk around like that. National Rumble Car was walking around. I'm like, hey, Rye, how you doing? He's wearing his gear. Lives the gimmick. He's giving everybody clothes. Could have set the rental car counter. You had to get specific. Oh, Got to get the upgrade, brother. <laughs> Pops up my first rodeo. <laughs> Executive uh, Emerald Taz. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I don't want to brag, <laughs> but I digress. St. Patrick. Bit of a jawbreaker there. That was nice. Tags out to Sage Scott. Sage comes in. Sage, a powerhouse, huh? Ooh. Uh oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, the chop block behind the back of the referee. Oh, Jake St. Patrick. Look at this. Roll up. Roll up high stack, but Benoni there to break it up in time. A move of parts going on here. Frank Gaston, the referee, has got to get it under control. Jake St. Patrick. Whoa. 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 Brought up high and dropped down low. Nemeth. The neck breaker, the cover, and the victory. No winners of this match, the team of Cesar Bononi and the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Impressive as always. A very formidable duo. The Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth, and Cesar Bononi, the wingman. Now look at Peter Avalon, looks like he just got off of a boat right outside of somewhere near like Coronado. And he left his socks on the boat. Well, that's what, when you do when you do any kind of boating, you don't wear socks, bro. Kind of a jabroni wears socks on a yacht. You've probably never been I've on never, a yacht. I've never been on a yacht, Taz, so I wouldn't know. I'm about to buy a yacht, bro, an orange one. 